Neymar is one of the most talented players in this football generation. As a kid, I absolutely fell in love with his game, which is why he's probably my favorite player of all time. Speaking of his game, he had everything. Flashy skills, electric pace, five-star dribbling, etc. All of this made everyone think that Neymar was bound to be a future Ballon d'Or winner, the heir of Messi at Barcelona, and the one to lead Brazil back to their World Cup glory days. However, at the age of 31, he cut his European career short and now has gone to the Saudi Arabia League and joined Al Hilal, disappointing many of his lifelong fans. So, how did Neymar, one of the greatest wonder kids to ever play football, failed to live up to his high expectations in this sport. Well, let's take a look at the rise and fall of Neymar Jr. Neymar da Silva Santos Jr. was born right outside the big city of Sao Paulo, Brazil on February 5th, 1992. A birthday iconic in football, with him sharing the day with the likes of Carlos Tevez, Jorge Haji, and of course, Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, Neymar was born into a football family, with his father, Neymar Sr., being a former footballer and now his advisor in his son's career. However, Neymar Sr.'s football career came to an end when he received serious injuries from a car crash with Neymar Jr. being four months old and in the car at the same time. This crash could have been the end of Neymar Jr. as well because within the first couple of minutes after the crash, the baby Neymar was nowhere to be found. However, as Neymar Sr. describes it, with God looking down on them, Neymar was found under the car seat with just his forehead bleeding. Who knew after this serious incident that Neymar Jr. was set to bring many blessings and fortune to his family's lives. Anyways, Neymar Jr. still had a difficult upbringing. Even with Neymar's dad working as a mechanic, salesperson, and a driver after his football career, his his family still sometimes struggled to put food on the table, with Neymar often asking for cookies to his mom and his mom replying that they couldn't afford them. Additionally, sometimes they had to go without electricity because they couldn't afford to pay the bill. Regardless of these hard circumstances though, one thing was for sure, Neymar was obsessed with football. His first toy was a football and he continuously played with it throughout the entire house, pissing off his mom in the process. He loved the sport so much that he used to play football with kids quite older than him on the streets of Brazil and even played a ton of futsal, which is probably why Neymar is so good with the ball at his feet. Anyways, one time while the destroying opponents in futsal, a Santos scout was watching him and wanted Neymar to play for the Brazilian club, and he and his parents agreed to this move. While playing for the Youth Academy of Santos, Neymar was balling out, so much so that when he was 14 years old, Real Madrid took notice of him and even invited Neymar and his dad to come to Spain and try out with the Real Madrid U team. Now this was a peak era for Real Madrid. This is when they had the Brazilian Ronaldo, Zinedine Zidane, David Beckham, Roberto Carlos, and even one of Neymar's idols, Robinho. With this peak Galactico era for Real Madrid, they wanted to add someone fresh and new, which is why Real Madrid accepted Neymar to the club and wanted him to sign with their U team. However, Neymar at the young age of 14 was feeling homesick for Brazil and wanted to go home. He didn't want to leave his family just yet and understandably so. That's when Neymar's father, Neymar Sr., asked Santos to put a similar offer that Real Madrid made on the table and he would guarantee Neymar's signature. And that's exactly what Santos did. And as we all know, the young Neymar accepted Santos' proposal and joined the Brazilian club for good. Jumping a few years to when Neymar was 17, he was so good for the Santos U teams that he was given his professional debut in March 2009. It wasn't just a one and done debut though. Neymar was then consistently picked for the senior team of Santos and became a mainstay with them. And in his debut season, Neymar racked up a total of 14 goals in the 48 games he played. That's not all though, because in 2010, Neymar continued to go crazy for Santos. In the Campeonato Paulista, a Brazilian cup, Neymar scored another 14 goals in 19 games for Santos, helping Santos get crowned champions of the tournament after a 5-5 aggregate win over Santo Adre in the finals. Subsequently, Neymar was given the award for the best player of the competition and deservedly so. Neymar was making waves in Brazil for Santos, and he wasn't gonna stop anytime soon. He wasn't just a local talent though, he quickly became the most exciting talent in football full stop. There were a ton of European clubs interested in signing him, with primarily clubs such as West Ham and Chelsea putting in bids for the young Brazilian prodigy. However, Santos rejected these bids, even though Neymar was pretty tempted with the Chelsea offer. But at the time, he felt like staying at Santos was the best option for him. Also, reportedly Pele called Neymar up to tell him to stay at Santos, so there's that. Anyways, overall in the season, Neymar finished it with 42 goals in 60 games, an insane stat line for an 18 year old kid. Additionally, there were Brazilian fans all over the country pleading with the national team to take Neymar to the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. However, the Brazilian coach at the time wasn't as moved by Neymar as the fans were and decided to leave him out of the squad. What a shame. Moving on from that, Neymar continued to grow into international stardom in football year after year with Santos, and quite frequently, he showed up on the big stage. That's because in the Copa Libertadores in 2011, basically the Champions League of South America, Neymar scored six goals in the run to the finals, where he had to face Uruguayan side Peñarol. In the final match, Neymar scored the opening goal as Santos went on to win the game 2-1, helping Santos finally win the Copa Libertadores since Pele, and he was recognized for that with him being given man of the match at the final. With his Libertadores win, Santos booked their ticket to the Club World Cup, which would be an excellent place for Neymar to truly show the world his talent, and that's exactly what he did. With them scoring the opening goal for Santos as they beat Kashiwa Reiso 3-1 in the semifinals, then even though Santos got absolutely battered 4-0 by Barcelona in the final, Neymar balled out in that game, showing the world and Barcelona his capabilities. Overall, after that 2011 season, Neymar won the 2011 FIFA Busquets Award for his so 
solo goal against Flamengo, and also won the 2011 South American Football of the Year award for the first time. Moving on to the year of 2012, Neymar easily became the most talked about player in the world after Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, obviously. Neymar basically had his best ever season so far in his young career, scoring 43 goals and 10 assists in 47 matches, meaning he had more goal contributions than games played as a 20-year-old. Additionally, Neymar finished the 2012 Campeonato Paulista with 20 goals and was voted the best player and best forward as Santos were crowned champions. Also in the Copa Libertadores, although Santos were beaten in the semifinals by Corinthians, he finished as the competition's joint top goal scorer with 8 goals. He also was selected for the Pushkas Award again, but didn't win it this time and just ended up being one of the finalists, and also won the 2012 South American Football of the Year Award, retaining it from his previous season. He repeated much more of the same in the 2013 season, getting a ton of rewards and balling out for Santos as per usual. However, this would be the last season for Neymar with the Brazilian club, with Neymar being fought over by many European clubs with the interest in signing him being at an all-time high. However, first, Neymar was focused on his country, Brazil, since he was selected to be a part of the 2013 Confederations Cup in his home country. There were a ton of expectations on the young Neymar, with him being given the number 10 shirt and also him expected to lead the five-time World Cup champions at the tournament, and Neymar lived up to those expectations, with him getting a total of four goals and two assists in the five games at the tournament, and of course with one of the goals being in the final against a dominant Spain, in which Brazil destroyed the European Giants 3-0, ending Spain's 29-game undefeated streak. With these great performances, Neymar rightfully won the golden ball for the tournament, showing the international world once again that he was ready for Europe. And ready he was, because in the summer of 2013, Neymar agreed to a move to FC Barcelona for a transfer fee of 57.1 million euros. Neymar was then presented at the Camp Nou in front of 56,000 plus people, showing how excited Barca fans were for him, and they had a right to be excited. A duo of Messi and Neymar? That seemed unstoppable, and it kind of was as well. Neymar did pretty well for his first season in Europe as well, with him backing 15 goals and 15 assists in 41 games, with three of those goals being in the Champions League when he got a hat-trick against Celtic. Overall, it was a good season, but in the 14-15 season is when Neymar really turned up for Barcelona. However, it wouldn't be a Neymar video if we didn't talk about him representing his country for the first time at the 2014 World Cup, the tournament Brazil hosted. But real quick before we talk about that though, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. Anyways, Neymar was going into the World Cup as Brazil's star player and was expected to lead Brazil to their sixth World Cup. And he did well, because in the first game against Croatia, the opening game of the tournament, Neymar led Brazil in their comeback versus the European nation and scored two goals to help beat them 3-1. Then in the final group stage game against Cameroon, Neymar backed two goals to help beat Cameroon 4-1, which meant that Brazil topped their group. Then in the quarterfinals against Colombia, Neymar got a very important assist as Brazil beat Colombia 2-1. However, the worst happened to Neymar because a Colombian player kneed Neymar in the back and he had to be removed off the pitch on a stretcher. In the hospital, it was revealed that Neymar suffered a fractured vertebra in his spine, which would keep him out for months. Brazil tried to honor Neymar in the semifinals against Germany to help bring the World Cup title home, but instead they got clapped 7-1 and Neymar couldn't do anything except watch the game on his TV. Now Neymar eventually returned to football in the 2014-15 campaign where he went off, scoring 39 goals and getting 10 assists in 51 games. Neymar was that guy for Barcelona. Well, Messi was that guy, but you know what I mean. What's crazier is that for any normal team, Neymar would be the main man with these sort of stats. But instead, he was sharing it with his lethal trio, MSN, with Suarez and Messi bagging tons of goals by themselves as well. And MSN carried Barcelona this season and accomplished something unforgettable, the treble. With Barcelona winning La Liga, Copa del Rey, Spanish Super Cup, and of course, the Champions League. Neymar played the most pivotal role for Barcelona in the Champions League as well, with him getting a goal in every single match as the quarterfinals first leg, bringing his total for the campaign to 10 goals, being the joint top goal scorer of the UCL with Ronaldo and Messi. To top the season off, the threatening attacking trio of MSN, Messi, Suarez, and Neymar ended with 122 goals, the most in the season for an attacking trio in Spanish football history. And of course, with Neymar's impressive performances and him being a part of a treble winning side, he was nominated for the Ballon d'Or, being on the three-man shortlist with Messi and Ronaldo, the closest he's ever gotten to winning the award. Of course though, with Messi being Messi, he came away with the Ballon d'Or instead. Anyways, nothing could top what Barcelona did in the 14-15 season, but Neymar still played incredible for the Spanish side. In the remaining 94 games he played for the club, Neymar managed to bag 51 goals and 51 assists for the club, which is nothing short of incredible. With these stats, Neymar helped Barcelona achieve another La Liga title and another Copa del Rey trophy in his final two seasons. However, one of the best highlights that I'll always personally remember from Neymar is that 4-0 comeback against PSG in the Champions League round of 16 in Neymar's last season. With 88 minutes already being played in the second leg, Barcelona needed three goals to progress in the next round. That's when Neymar came in and carried the team on his back, with him scoring an amazing free kick in the 88th minute, then a cold penalty in the 91st minute, and then in the 95th minute of the match, he set up Sergio Roberto with a beautiful assist on his weak foot to send Barcelona to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Now clearly, Neymar was the reason Barcelona even made it through, but most of the spotlight was on Messi, which then played a part in why Neymar did something drastic during the transfer window in the upcoming summer. Now listen, Neymar played amazing during the MSN era of Barcelona, the attacking trio that many European teams have feared in the past and thought they
they would fear for many years to come. However, Neymar always wanted to be the main man of the team, someone who's seen as the best on the roster, and something he definitely couldn't be if he continued with Barcelona, with him always going to be seen in Messi's shadow, as evident from that game against PSG. Barca fans didn't really see it like that though, with them thinking that Neymar is more of the heir of Messi rather than him being in the shadow, but Neymar thought otherwise of himself. That's why in the summer of 2017, Neymar was more than happy to accept PSG's personal terms, which then led the French club to pay 222 million euros to Barcelona, making Neymar the most expensive transfer ever, meaning that Neymar was going to leave the club he was destined to lead after Messi. Neymar would easily become the best, if not one of the best players in Ligue 1, with him scoring 28 goals and getting 16 assists in 30 games during his first season. And in the season, he won a lot of silverware as well, like winning Ligue 1, the Coupe de France, and French League Cup, earning him third place at the Ballon d'Or award ceremony. However, Neymar got injured versus Marseille during the crucial February period in the season and failed to make another appearance for PSG in that campaign. These injuries during this time period for Neymar would become extremely reoccurring throughout his time at PSG, which then led people to make jokes of Neymar purposely getting injured to attend his sister's birthday, but that's all jokes, bro. There's no truth to that, obviously. However, Neymar did recover right before the 2018 World Cup, where Neymar would make a return to the biggest international tournament in the world after that serious injury back in 2014. And Neymar was definitely in the spotlight at this tournament, but not for the right reasons. Yes, he had good moments, like scoring a late goal against Costa Rica, assisting against Serbia in the last group stage game, getting one goal and assist to knock out Mexico in the round 16, before getting eliminated by Belgium in the quarterfinals. However, the reason why Neymar was in the spotlight a lot at this World Cup was because of his diving and naughty antics. He kept rolling around on the ground, basically begging referees to call fouls for him. I can't blame Neymar though. He was one of the most foul players in the tournament, especially in the game against Switzerland, where he broke the record for most fouls to a specific player at a World Cup game. But yeah, this World Cup in that aspect was pretty embarrassing as a Neymar fan, especially with recreational teams making fun of Neymar, with them rolling around on the ground pretending they're him. Moving on from this though, Neymar's next season for PSG would still also be very efficient, with him getting 23 goals and 13 assists in 28 games. Now we all know Ligue 1 might not be one of the strongest European leagues, but these types of numbers that Neymar was putting up have been severely overlooked, just because of the league he was playing in. These were world class stats by Neymar, and nobody could say otherwise. However, the injury happened again, where he got injured around the January February period, and missed out on the Champions League knockout stages with PSG again, in which PSG got eliminated by Man United in the round of 16. Now the 1920 season was actually the lowest output Neymar has produced so far, with him only getting 19 goals and 12 assists in 27 games. Obviously these are great stats, but for Neymar, not so much. However, for the first time with PSG, Neymar was fit enough to play in the Champions League knockout rounds for the French club, and it's no coincidence that they reached the final when Neymar was fit. Neymar was instrumental during this UCL campaign, with him getting two goals in the tie against Dortmund, a crucial assist against Atalanta, and a crucial assist against RB Leipzig to help PSG reach the final for the first time in their history against Bayern Munich. And although Neymar gave it his all during the final, Bayern eventually won 1-0. However, like I mentioned, it's no secret that when Neymar was fit for the first time during the Champions League knockout stages, they made the final. That's all I'm saying. Now skipping over to the 21-22 season, one of the reasons why Neymar left Barcelona arrived at PSG, Lionel Messi. Neymar yet again was sharing the stage with one of his best friends, who at the same time was the reason why he left Barcelona, a club many argued that he should have stayed at. But now with PSG, they have the most threatening trio at the time, killing Mbappe, Lionel Messi, and Neymar. However, nothing amazing would come from this trio, because PSG brought these superstar players in, like Neymar, to win the Champions League. And as we all know, in the 21-22 and 22-23 campaign, PSG failed, with them losing to Real Madrid in the round 16 while being 2-0 up, and then losing to Bayern Munich in the round 16 in the next season, where Neymar was injured for yet again. Neymar was getting injured so much for PSG during such important times that PSG fans were starting to get really infuriated with him, even showing up to his house demanding that he should leave the French club. I feel for Neymar though, because before his injury in the 22-23 season, Neymar was set to have one of his best campaigns yet for the club, with him putting up Ballon d'Or numbers, like getting 18 goals and 17 assists in 29 games. However, yet again, that PSG injury ruined his momentum at pretty much his last chance of winning the Ballon d'Or. Now, this wasn't supposed to be his last chance at the Ballon d'Or, because with Messi departing to Inter Miami and Mbappe looking likely to leave in the summer, Neymar was supposed to have a great season for PSG in the 23-24 campaign, being the main man. He was also there for the Asia preseason tour, scoring two goals as well. However, coincidentally, the same day Mbappe got invited back to training from his banishment, Neymar decided to leave PSG to join Al Hilal for a reported salary of $300 million for two years. Neymar, one of the most talented players of this generation, the heir to Messi at Barcelona, said to be the next Pele, the man to lead Brazil back to the glory days, was leaving to a club in Saudi Arabia at just 31 years old, the peak of his powers. It's a sad reality to be honest. Now it hurts me to admit this as a huge Neymar fan, but in all honesty, Neymar did not live up to his full potential, and some of that fault is on him. Like for example, continuously partying and drinking during the season, when he should have rather been focused on the sport. It's Neymar's life though, and he can do whatever he wants, and most of the time, he still produces on the pitch, but still, if Neymar had Messi and Ronaldo's work ethic, I'm sure he could have been even better than he already was. And maybe, if he was born in a different generation of football, he could have 
have had a couple of Ballon d'Ors secured under his belt for sure. Regardless of the way his career ended up though, with him giving up on European football and joining Al Hilal in Saudi Arabia, Neymar is still one of the most disrespected players on the planet. Just because people are too clouded by some of his bad antics, like diving, and his ridiculously high expectations, which in my opinion set him up to fail. Neymar still accomplished a lot in the sport, like winning a Champions League, a couple of La Ligas, numerous Ligoons, a Copa Libertadores, an Olympics gold medal, the Confederations Cup for Brazil, and many, many more awards. So although Neymar had basically given up on his European career, real football fans like myself will never forget how truly special Neymar was. So to Neymar, thank you for playing a huge part in me falling in love with the beautiful game. I'll always cherish the entertainment you've provided to me and many others on the pitch. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to learn more about another future Ballon d'Or winner and someone who's also played with Neymar, Kylian Mbappe, you definitely want to check out this video right here. You won't regret it.